Hey, Abnormal Family. I wanted to share a video with you guys about kind of how Sasquatch is viewed from a Native American point of view. Working on the uh, Girl Scout murders, I learned a lot of things. It's still in that part of uh, Oklahoma. They still practice Native American culture, religion, and beliefs. The Sasquatch and the Gugwe are very common names that are uh, used to describe the, uh, I guess, pretty much be a way to put it would be the, the shy ones, the, you know, the shy tribe. Uh, I've learned a lot, uh, and I'm still working on the Girl Scout murders, and there will be another release, and, um, I plan on this one being the, uh, the final release that I'll do on it. It'll be an extensive, uh, investigation that'll go deeper, I think, than what most people have, have went on the investigation. And, um, I think we're going to come up with some answers that people haven't even heard yet. Um, I'm working on it very hard, uh, like I said. It's uh, got a lot more evidence than I than what has been shown. I've been through video after video after video on Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Rumble, and they haven't even touched on what I'm going to release. It'll be big. Um, I will give you all plenty of notice before it drops. You may want to download it when it comes out in case it's removed. High possibility it may be. And it will also be uploaded on Rumble, as I am now testing the waters over there. But um, I'll talk a little more about that as we do this story and um, when we end this story. It might be a little lengthy tonight, guys. Um, a Native American actually showed me this story and said it would be a good one for me to share with you guys. So, A Native American man is literally abducted by a Sasquatch while sitting with family on his porch. The man was later found beaten so badly that he soon died afterwards. The Sasquatch was killed by the locals. This story is passed down through relatives that did not openly talk about it much due to the way these Native Americans revered the Sasquatch and felt guilty about killing one. They especially felt guilty because the Sasquatch was believed to be more human than an average Sasquatch. The Salish Indian, who recounts this story, makes this comment about this particular wild man. A scanicum is a word for someone born not of a direct human, but of a Sasquatch kind. This might seem like a cruel joke, something to call a human with developmental dis disabilities, etc. But the honest to God truth may be too hard to swallow. That Sasquatch have interbred with women in the past and the existence of these offsprings has been swept under the rug and kept hidden like the hairy man. During the 60s, it was rumored that one of the town bishops of the local church, likely a, and I hope I get this right, a Jesuit, had taken in a freak of some sort. This freak was not human, but not animal enough to be rejected by the Jesuit. So the Jesuit was keeping him from was keeping him in the basement and feeding him. The only reason knowledge of this exists is because people would hear things at the church in human things. If you ask me, the Jesuits did not want this thing to be out and about. This sounds somewhat unbelievable, but keep in mind that the reason the men who shot the hairy man when a little insane was because they killed a human. A giant, ridiculously muscular human covered in hair, but a human, too human to parade about town in the back of a pickup truck, if you know what I mean. The Sasquatch, or the Scanicum, of this story had become particularly bold about raiding the homes when people were away and stealing their food. And, you know, I'm going to stop a little bit right there, and I'm not going to run the book that I'm putting out. But my granny did have one time when she was out in the field, had looked up and through the back door 
and saw this creature inside of her home. And whenever they rushed up to the house to see what was in the house, her and my grandpa, it was gone. And they was missing a little bit of bologna, a little bit of bread, some cheese, and potatoes. So that kind of made me think of something. The account starts, when the wild man was having his way, free reign, he was getting bold. He started to break into houses during the middle of the day. Children would see him, and they would flip out. Police were called. Meetings were held. The town was becoming more and more shaken up by the presence of this unknown intruder. This was when something incredible happened to the particular family who was favored by the hairy man. They had become so lax and accepted of the hairy man's presence that one night, while standing on the porch, the father was yanked off by his feet in full view of the entire family. They screamed and huddled together and cried, while whatever it was fought with the dad on the porch. The sounds of the fighting and the screaming and knowing that your father was powerless against whatever it was must have been unspeakably traumatic for the kids. They are now grown up like myself, and I wonder to this day how much this affected their lives. This is a good reason why not to gift or trust these creatures. The father was gone for days. Whatever it was had taken him, had carried him off into the night after his struggle on the porch. There was blood on the grass, and a family grabbed neighbors and men of the community to help recover the father. The men got together and followed the signs and trails left whatever it was, drops of blood and signs of something large passing through. They followed this trail all the way to the very creek, which my uncle had spotted a Sasquatch at. They followed the creek all night. When the men returned the next day, they didn't speak a word. The whole group of grown men and not one of them was willing to speak about what happened. They had, however, found the father. They recovered him. He was beaten black and blue over his entire body. Ribs broken, arms and legs broken. The father was in shock, incoherent, and he was unable to speak a word. And you know, I was thinking a lot about Brenda Hamilton uh, and a lot of people that were attacked by these creatures that weren't able to talk. And the police just said that they were uncooperative. One of my uncles had gone to see the man and his family in the hospital. There was a fair amount of good well-being shown to the family that went through this experience. Nobody knew what happened. Only the father was close to death and the family was very shaken up. So my uncle stopped by to pay his respects and saw for himself the father laying in the hospital. His eyes were bulging wide. He was trembling constantly. The man had been beaten badly. But something else was wrong with him. He was traumatized. He died that night, and to this day, nobody knows what grabbed him or what happened to him. To this day, men who went to recover on the recovery mission to save him have kept these stories to themselves. Only a select circle, including my father, remember these incidents. Almost nobody talks about them. I have shared them with you for whatever it's worth. Those men found what... Uh, what it was that took my father. They found the hairy man and they killed it. They shot it to death with the high powered rifles and they buried the body. The men who did this feel incredibly guilty. Sasquatch is a matter of fact here and the old generations told us to avoid them and leave them alone because they are human beings. They are not animals and they are not magic. They can most certainly be monsters and this is one of the stories that corro corroborates that. The big hairy man Bigfoot is so human-like that even here, when a group of men killed uh, the creature, uh, wow, it went crazy. Uh, back in the 70s, there was so desire to be rich and famous for killing a Bigfoot. There was no desire to even talk about Bigfoot. These kind of things were dirty little secrets, especially on reservations. Yes, there were plenty of white kids bumping into Bigfoot and getting in the newspapers, but the Indian community is tight-lipped about this, even still to this day. 
they know how dangerous they are and they say it's better to avoid them but you notice they say that they're not magic and that you don't want to gift them and you see what happens to the man in this video that did gift them um again you know i've been talking to people about the girl scout murders over there at still practices and um some of the the, the good natives see the gugwe as good as a protector of the land uh if you hear the cat hunter's playing with it so she sees him she's wanting to play with hunter uh but they uh the the good ones want it gone the dark magic users they want the googway there and you know they have told me that if i go to this location and i you know further my investigations it's boots on the ground that it would not be a safe place for me uh to be able to go and investigate. And the more I talk to them, the more, you know, they uh, they regard it, the, the black magic people, as it's a good thing. And then the good ones say it's a bad thing. And, uh, you know, they tell me that when I go over there to investigate that I'm not even going to be safe. So I have a security team that I'll be taking with me. And there, there's, you know, it goes really deep with them. But what I've noticed a lot is they have a deep knowledge and a lot of people want to say that these things, you know, are going through portals and they're going, you know, through all this. I respect everybody's opinion. And I'm not saying that it, it doesn't happen. I'm saying that my belief is, is I don't believe that it happens. And if it does, I haven't seen enough evidence to cause me to believe that it's plausible that it happens. I'm not saying that people don't, you know, believe that they see they see portals. Um, I'm sure they do. But as far as for me, um, I'm evidence-based, and I would have to see one. And um, I, I, I respect everybody's opinions. And someday, if I'm proven wrong and they happen, then I'll, you know, I'll be okay with that. But as far as being proven wrong, I just don't see it happening because God pretty much sums it up to me in the Bible. So it's, I don't know. It's just, uh, I'm just comfortable with that opinion and believe that it, believe it to be true. But you know, they, they talk about it's not magic. They say it, it can be a monster. It's it's dangerous. It's not something to mess with. But they they don't like to call it an animal. They they call it a human of some sort. Uh, some of them call it even a, you know, they say developmentally uh, challenged. But what they're meaning is it's human, but it looks different. And what they're trying to say is it has hair. It's larger. It's bigger. Uh, they say they have their own language. Uh, they howl. They, you know, a little more wild in the ways that they hunt. But they'll also tell you that they build fires and use small tools. And, you know, they're, they're still find a lot of tools today that are old tools, arrowheads that have been made, but they, uh, but they're not old. But they're, they've, they're still made the old ways that they still find in the creeks. And I think that's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, you know. I was told a long time ago to leave them alone. They leave me alone too. And it's kind of what they're saying here is don't gift them, you know, and don't, you know, get close to them. And that's what they're telling me over there too. They're like, if you leave it alone, it'll leave you alone. It'll, you know, it'll bluff charge you if you go on to its, you know, to where its domain is. It'll run you out, you know, just take the warnings and don't just keep moving in on it, you know, be smart about it. And I was always told also, if you have a fire that, that you're safe. I've learned a lot speaking with these people and I'm going to be speaking with them more and I'm going to be going over there. It is a boots on the ground. A lot of y'all asked, you know, why we're not doing boots on the ground. We do boots on the ground a lot. We go to the woods a lot. It just, there's nothing happening right now. And I'm also doing a lot of boots on the ground on this other case that I'm working on. And y'all are going to get to see a lot of that. And uh, trust me, it's going to be well worth it whenever we release it. Um, Calvin is aware of what's going on and uh, he will, I'm sure, you know, attest to what's happening and how large this, this investigation is and why it has to be kept under wraps right now. But when it's released, you all will understand why it had to be, you know, under wraps. Uh, but, you know, as far as I've been dangerous and everything, the tribes that I've talked to so far over there, which is mostly Cherokee and uh, there is some Delaware there, they all agree that it is dangerous. It's just you have ones that say that they want it there and ones that say that they don't, but they all agree that it's dangerous and should be left alone. 
But I just wanted to share that with you and kind of some of the things I found out as I've been investigating. It's just a few of the things I found. I have all kinds of notes. But I wanted to share this one with you all also tonight. Um, I think you'll find it interesting. Uh, I know that Brian from Red Dirt Cryptid, we've been talking and uh, we, uh, we believe that Oklahoma is higher on the list for cryptid encounters and as far as the cryptid population, what people kind of think that where we're at. But a lot of people around here, like you said, you know, are uh, Native American and are tight-lipped more so than, you know, other parts of the country where people are more freely to speak about it. A lot of them around here, uh, even when I talk to the ones that I know, the first things they tell you is don't use my name and don't tell people where it happened at because they don't want a bunch of people from out of town coming down here stomping on their hunting and fishing grounds and littering and hanging out and you know hunting bigfoot and running him out and because they hold it as sacred so you kind of have a duty of keeping you know your integrity and your word to them and not giving away these locations uh, and they are tight-lipped about it and if they don't know you they're not going to talk to you about it i was lucky enough that i grew up in this small town and with the cherokees that you know i heard the stories and was told the stories and um a lot of you have asked me where where is this happening at you know and I, I can't give those locations because i've given promises not to do that i had a body that was given to me to a guy that said you know that he found a burial ground of one and um he sent it to me um, i'll share the picture in this video a lot of you have asked to see it um, i've done a video on it but i'm going to put that photograph at the end of, end of the video and some people say they have seen more than one on the on the video the picture on, on the picture so you're not confused uh there's a fork of a tree that you're going to see his head is in, in between the fork of the tree and his arm is up and over it and hanging down but his head will be and you'll see his face in between the the fork of the tree and the guy says he took it with a super zoom camera now he has given me the location to where he says he found this burial ground and he says that the burial grounds don't stay there long that they move their dead he doesn't know what they do with them but he says they do move their dead he tried to uh said he tried to go in close and uh, was ran out he said they got pretty violent with him and this clan has usually been pretty okay with him at being around as long as he kept his distance so you know, it's just things that I hear. It's not things that I can prove. Like I say, it's 50% my mouth. But this is a this is a guy that was a deputy sheriff that has studied these all of his life that I know personally and don't feel that he has, you know, any reason to lie to me. Um, the picture is pretty awesome. I'll share it and um, see what you all think. I look forward to your comments on that. But as far as the, uh, the larger investigation, it's getting close. Uh, it won't be long. There's a lot of it to put together, even when I get everything done that I'll have to put together. But um, it'll be well worth it. And I'm still working on the book. The book will be coming out hopefully soon. I just haven't got to work a lot on it. I got a lot of things going. Our house was hit, you know, by a storm with a lot of damage and summers here and animals and trying to keep these up and doing this investigation. So it'll happen. But uh, I just want to reach out to you guys, talk with you all a little bit tonight. Uh, share this story with you kind of what I've been you know what I've been finding out and it all goes back to my granny and my granny's dad was a full-blood Cherokee and she said the same thing about Sasquatch but she'd also tell you when I was down at the house that there was other things out there and she would admit that so they know there are other things out there and I just hope to keep learning more and more information guys as we go and these stories they're very knowledgeable and I even brought up a portal, you know, to the chief and, you know, they, they believe in, you know, a lot of magic and even they say that they don't use portals. So that they're human, that they're flesh and blood. He says that they die and they have killed them. They used to steal their women, eat their children. They mated with their women. He said, and their women would have babies. Some would survive. Some would not. Uh, I guess they have a word for it that I didn't even know, which is scanicum. And uh, he said that's what the babies were called. They were not born of, you know, was not human. Uh, so I'm learning a lot as we go. 
and they have a lot and hopefully they'll trust me to share a lot more with me but we'll leave it there guys and um, I appreciate y'all watching uh, it's always a pleasure to share this with you guys until then keep your head on a swivel don't be something's dinner and look high and low because you never know where they're going to be